Battle of Brandywine was an epic battle between the great generals William Howe and George Washington, the longest one-day battle fought in the entire Revolutionary War, all fought on turf less than 10 miles from our home. Here's a look behind the careful planning and psychological warfare that occurred before this historic battle. General Howe marches up from the head of the Elk River with an army of 17,000. Expecting Loyalist support along the way, he is disappointed to find none. Under Howe, the famous General Charles Cornwallis. Hessians under Cornwallis march up to the small town of Elkton, scouting for the massive force commanded by Howe. By this time, Elkton has been deserted in fear of the British. In addition, the Delaware militia has swept in and taken the last of the supplies along with burning a bridge, inconveniencing the British just minutes before they arrive. By the end of the day, the British reach Elkton. It makes a comfortable home for the British to rest for the night. General Howe sets up shop in Elk Tavern while officers are housed in abandoned residences. All soldiers are housed in a makeshift camp north of the town. The 71st Regiment serves as communication between Elkton and the unloading troops of General Wilhelm von Nyfausen and General Gray. While quartered at Elkton, scavenging parties go searching for supplies. Though severe punishment is meted out to thieves in the British Army, the Army doesn't care. The Army is not disturbed when making their camp and stealing their supplies. At this point, there is very little food left in storage, so Howe decides to split up his forces to forage for food. Much importance was put toward getting fodder for the already weak horses. Howe orders Niphausen and Gray, who are still at the landing site, to go east instead of coming up to Elkton. Cornwallis, on the other hand, experiences some action. After skirmishes with the Delaware militia, he secures Iron Hill and captures the village of Iron Works. On the morning of September 3rd, the British force moves towards Cooch's Bridge. In Wilmington, Washington meets up with his generals and increases his army numbers by calling in militiamen. He also realizes that he needs a sharpshooting force on the 29th of August, so he calls in 700 riflemen. They form a special corps that is headed by General William Maxwell. Washington marches forward towards White Clay Creek, 10 miles north of Elkton. In the early morning the next day, he falls back towards Red Clay Creek as he feels uncertain about his position. He sets up his troops to prepare for a battle. Washington then turns his attention to fortifying the Delaware River. He tells his men to clear the countryside and to clear the area of cattle and horses. General Maxwell is already stationed his special corps at Cooch's Bridge and sees the vanguard of the British force, led by Cornwallis, coming down towards him. The British vanguard consists of British light infantry and 300 Hessian soldiers. Maxwell's force is strategically placed behind woods on either side of the road when the British approach. Maxwell's positioning is perfect for an ambush. The Patriots begin a spirited ambush that completely confuses the British. The Patriots fire, fall back towards the bridge, and reload time and time again with the advantage of knowing the terrain. They continue this until they reach the bridge, where they run out of ammunition. At this point, the battle transforms into a sword fight, where the British hold the advantage. Due to some flanking errors by the 2nd Battalion of British Light Infantry, Maxwell's troops are able to hold out longer than expected. They're still forced to retreat, though. The Americans report 20 dead and 20 wounded, and the British report 21 wounded and 3 dead. Considering the fact that Americans ambushed the British and had superior marksmen, the British casualty numbers are likely to have been forged. Cornwallis decides to camp out at a tavern nearby to the location of the skirmish. The owner of the tavern, Thomas Cooch, has fled to Pennsylvania even though he isn't a Tory or a Whig. Cornwallis sent out Count Donov's Hessian Brigade to survey from Iron Hill. A group of Hessians and British were sent to a main American camp at Red Clay Creek. This group was intended to trick Washington into believing the British were advancing, while the majority of the troops were to flank Washington on his right. American General Caesar Rodney sent a group of mounted militia from Knoxentown to keep Howe busy. They taunt the British with a handful of shots, then recede into the darkness. The British decide to wait to regroup, finalize plans, and let all supplies be unloaded before proceeding. On September 4th, Howe decided to make a move down the Elk River, southward, out of Chesapeake Bay. Rodney and Maxwell found out about the plan and alerted Washington, who realized that land battle was close at hand. Washington decides to spend the next few days trying to figure out British plans. 
He recruits locals as spies and deceivers. The British Recon team is filled with false information and reports the locals' lies to General Erskine. Washington realizes the usefulness of the spies and decides to pay them. The spies reward him with the hiding place of Count von Donop. Although General Maxwell wanted to go after von Donop, the mission was deemed too risky. Washington also wrote to General Howe, asking him for a VIP prisoner exchange. He wanted General Lee for the release of General Prescott. Although the trade didn't go through, it was probably for the better. When the Americans did get General Lee back, he performed so badly that he was reprimanded and court-martialed by General Washington. On September 6th, Grant arrives with the battalions that have helped soldiers at Elk to unload the fleet. The night before the 8th, Howe sends a brigade of Hessians towards Washington to fool the Americans into thinking that the entire British force is launching an attack. This thought is increased by scouts that proclaim that all the Britishers are coming forward for a full-scale attack. On the 8th, the main body of the British has reached Newport and control it. If Howe attacks Washington here, there is a good chance that the American forces could be left crippled, but he stops. On the morning of September 9th, the American forces retreat to Chatsford between Howe and Philadelphia. Howe uses the cover of night and camouflage to slowly move. Knifehausen arrives at Kennett Square near midnight and camped near the town. Cornwallis arrives a bit later due to his fatigued horses. Grant ended up a few miles away from Kennett Square. On the 10th, Washington's headquarters at Benjamin Ring's house. A false alarm sounded out in the very morning. Howe was slow to start an attack. After the false alarm, Washington secured his defenses, but did not have enough manpower to cover all of the area. Joseph Galloway, a member of the Pennsylvania Assembly, is a loyalist that gives information to Howe to help him shape his tactics. Forces met at Chester County, an area full of Quakers, people of peace. Howe set up his headquarters at a tavern nearby. He diagrammed the battle plan and rested his troops. He gave more strength to Knifehausen. It is the day before the Battle of Brandywine. The March to Brandywine was an important section of our local colonial history because it was the prologue to one of the defining battles of the Philadelphia Campaign and the Revolutionary War. Without the actions and steps taken during the March to Brandywine, our country may not have been the same.